got a little challenge lock here from Chris L. Defy the Defiant. It sounds like some kind of counter counter revolutionary thing. Little arrow, other side uh, has his email address. I don't want to flip that over. Uh, obviously, a defiant. And you look at this guy, it looks like just pulled it out of a door until I looked at the front. And clearly, Chris does not want me using top of the keyway. It looks like he cut that out of there with a drill to prevent that. But when he did that, I think you can see now, you can get a real good look at that first pin, and you can see some real sharp serrations on him. So you know, obviously challenge lock, but at least you know that first one is going to be crunchy. Our favorite lock characteristic, right? Get on there. Get on there. There we go. All right. Uh, I do have a key from Chris. I'll shrink wrap. Hopefully we won't be needing that. Let me push him back a little more so he doesn't have any play at all. There we go. All right, Chris is going to force me to use bottom of keyway. But that's that's a little big, I think. Try this guy. It's a little better. No pinching. Let me zoom in. I'm going to mark it so we can see if there's any kind of fault set. I'm going to put a mark because of the glare. Had a couple of comments. I'm going to put a couple of different marks, just depending on what the glare is like. Hopefully, you'll be able to see at least one of those marks. All right, we know it's a challenge lock, but I like to attack them. First of all, let me get a pick and see what we got here. I just want to make sure I've had so many of those big lighter springs lately. Yeah, there's something crazy in the back there, but. No super, there's a lot of crunchy, I can feel it with my, just raking them. Uh, no super springs, so that's a good thing. All right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to rake up a fault set, and then we'll go from there. So I'm going to use a standard Bogota, this is a Sparrows, 25,000. Super light tension, it is, we know it's got at least one crunchy pin in there. As long as I'm getting something from the lock, in other words, I can feel that, Bogota hitting and, and feeling a little bit of counter rotation. I'm just going to keep going. I think we got a little fault set there. Come on. All right, I do feel. Oh, there was a counter rotation. I just bounced right out of my deep or out of my fault set. Sometimes it works. Time not so much. Ah, check that out. Okay, those little marks have come misaligned, and that tells you that the lock is now open. <laughs> Did not expect that. I'm going to take my my medium hook. I'm just going to put him right back in the in the rack. We're just not going to use him. Did not expect that. You usually don't get that with challenge locks, particularly when you got serrated pins. But sometimes uh, you are the windshield instead of the bug, so I'll take it. So we're gonna put turn it back up. Did not even need top of the keyway tension for that. Looks like a stock key, not modified. Beautiful, perfectly smooth, just what you'd expect. Okay, let's. This is my biggest challenge, always. I know these dang clips. And the circlip tool I bought is never the right size. Oh, man, he's just a little bit off. Come around there. Maybe I can use his claw. To grab him. Probably not the way he's intended to be used, but I will take it. All right. Let's get that key back over here. Get that clip up there. Light him in. 90 degrees. Okay. 
This may present a little bit of challenge if there are T-pins. we got a groove there. I don't know if I'm going to be able to squeeze a shim in there or not because of that tailpiece. Try it. Now I need a hollow. It's too big. To kind of fit around that rounded edge. Hope for the best. All right, here we go. Okay. That did work. Man, that's two guttings in a row with no disaster. I know you guys are all disappointed. All right. Every one of these has, had been fi has been filed. I think I get the glare to go just right. You can see that pretty clearly. Uh, I am told that widens the gap so that when you have spools, it uh, accentuates. It, make, it makes the uh, deep set much deeper. I don't know how true that is. And I think it's still up in the air as to whether or not that uh, actually works. But it is what it is. I can already see a whole bunch of threads in there. All right, serrated, standard. Haven't seen one of those guys in a long time. It is a odd, oh, come here, you. An odd cut that we will look at closer. That's interesting. A homemade serrated and it looks like a spool. This is really clean work, Chris. This is very nice. All of the grooves are cut identically almost like it was CNC'd man very nice the threads are all also all very sharp nothing in there appears boogered up threaded all the way to the bottom very nice work all right before we look at those pins let's go ahead and pull these guys out and see what we got um, this is another follower not ideal but uh, at least the pin won't fall all the way through come on He looks like a narrow, a narrow, not quite a T-pin, but he is definitely narrowed on one end. And we have a steel spring. And I see threads in the chamber. Number two, very light spring on that one. Looks like a standard pin. He almost fell off. Okay, another same spring, another steel one. Number three, very light spring. It's a spool, it looks like, and it's a commercial spool. All the springs so far are all the same. Let's go around here where the light is better. Pick towards the light. Standard in number five. And no spring. Unless he's really down in there. There he is. He's a little different. No, he's the same. He's just got a little kink in him. All right, and the last one, pin number four. He's got a little spring behind him, a little tension. Standard pin. Another steel one. All right, all the springs are the same. Number five is a little boogered up. There's my shim, and inside of here it looks like, come on, focus, number five, number four. And number one, there are some very slight serrations in two and three, but I don't think those are threads. I think those, that's just remnants from the, yes they are, they are threads. It looks like they didn't come down quite deep enough, though, when he obviously threaded from the top. So it looks like chamber two and three are not quite finished, not threaded all the way down. The rest of them certainly are. All right, let's take a look at the pins. There are some interesting pins here. Um, first one would be this guy. Let me turn this down just a hair. Have a T-pin inside of here, and then there's the serrations that you could see from the wallowed out keyway to prevent top of the keyway. Both these were standards. I really don't see that very often. It is not a key pin though, so that makes it a little tougher. This guy also not a key pin. We have one serration in the middle, and on top we had a commercial spool. This guy, man, 
That really is quite a bit of serration on that guy. Standard pin on top, standard pin on top, and then this guy also has a reduced diameter in the center, but it's almost like he is a started out as a T-pin and ended up as a kind of a spool with a serration on the top. With all the threading in there, there was plenty of stuff for those cuts to grab on in this lock from Chris. I am surprised I was able to rake that one. That, I think, was probably about uh, probably about 90% luck. I was really hoping for a fault set, and I did. I got the ultimate fault set. Anyway, guys, appreciate your time. Stay safe, stay legal. Chris, thank you, sir, for the lock. Appreciate it.